Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel for some Chelsea news after a Champions League knockout round. First game victory at home to Lille in the Champions League last night. If you haven't seen the match review, The Six Things We Learned, which is the series that I make after every single Chelsea game, be sure to go and check the link in the description. It was uploaded like last night quite late after the game. Well, it was actually like within 15, 20 minutes of the match finishing. You guys got the video, but if you haven't seen it, I'd understand why you probably went to bed. Chelsea were very good last night, which puts me in a very good mood. And today, we have got four new stories to talk to you guys about. The first one is an update, I guess you could say, about the contract situation of the defenders from the Secret Scouts. We're going to go into that then. We're going to talk about a player that we played against last night, David from Lille. Then we're going to talk about Livramento. And we're going to finish with the news that Chelsea are trying to bring Eden Hazard back on loan. But first things first, the secret scout underscore is the Twitter handle. There's also the secret scout on Instagram. I'm going to leave a link in the description because from what I've seen from this secret scout, from this account, it's actually usually relatively accurate. I don't actually know the face or the name behind the name, so to speak. But from what we can see here, it looks as though it were just waiting for the news. According to this, I'm not saying that it's gospel truth, but this is probably the best kind of hint slash source that we've had so far, saying that Azpilicueta and Christensen are going to be leaving and Rudiger is going to be staying. If I'm honest, this isn't really a surprise. This is exactly how I thought it's going to go the entire time. It's what I've said here on GBFC for a long time too. But I'd be totally lying if I said to you that I had a source that gives me this information other than my own intuition, to be honest. So now that this is coming from somebody who I do believe actually has better sources than me, not only do I want to shout them out so that you guys can go and follow them and make up your own judgments, but I also want to say that this is probably the most likely outcome. We've seen Barcelona heavily interested in Azpilicueta, Bayern Munich see Christensen as the perfect Nicolas Sule replacement, and Rudiger is always wanted to stay at Chelsea. So I think with both Aspi and Christensen going on, it does free up a bit more money in the wage bill for Chelsea to then be like, right, Rudiger's the top defender. We give him a little bit more money. And we get this one problem solved. And as we go on later in this video today where we talk a bit more about Eden Hazard, you will see why all of the transfers that we've been kind of foreshadowing here on GBFC for Chelsea's upcoming summer make a lot more sense if a deal for Hazard actually goes through. But we'll get into that one a little bit later on. Moving into story number two. Jonathan David, David, whichever way you want to pronounce it, the Lille forward who played against us last night, didn't really have that much of a sniff. If I'm honest, if we have to rate the performances of the opposition, Renato Sanchez was by far Lille's best player. When he went off for the last 10 minutes, Chelsea started to dominate the game again. Or David, the striker for Lille, is a decent player. He's a player that Chelsea have supposedly been interested in for a while. But I think last night we saw a big golf in class. As much as Lille weren't bad, there was definitely a big gap between Chelsea and Lille. And I think even though we weren't scintillating in attack, Lille certainly got into good attacking positions. But then the likes of Rudiger, Silva, Christensen, Aspi, everybody kind of dealt with the Lille attack last night, which does pose a question to me when we're looking at two of Chelsea's attackers who have been scrutinised, have been questioned, both Kai Havertz and Pulisic, Chelsea's goal scorers last night. When you look at what those two did for Chelsea and you look at what David did for Lille, you just wonder if this could be one of those where it would potentially just be adding another high quality potential talent to the squad. But at the same time, is it really that kind of signing that is that kind of level above what we existingly have? I don't think it would be. It would require, as we can see here from this tweet, it would require the sale of either a Lukaku or a Timo Werner. And after what we saw last night, I'm not going to be jumping out of my chair for this one. I think he's a good player. 
from what I've seen of him in the French League, not that Lille are doing that well in the French League, but it isn't, for me, the number one target if Chelsea are actually going to go out and try and buy an attacker. We move into the news regarding Tino Livramento. For those of you that do not know, Southampton's right-back, who is currently setting the Premier League on fire, used to be a Chelsea Academy player until this summer, where Southampton got arguably one of the bargain transfers of the previous summer transfer window. Southampton are in a really good run of form, Tino Livramento is having a really good season. As a result of that, he is not only delivering for Southampton, but peaking interest from Manchester United, who probably see Livramento as an upgrade to Juan Bissaka, particularly for the future. So, what has this got to do with Chelsea? Well, Chelsea have a clause which enables them to buy back Tino Livramento for £38 million from 2023. Now, that's only a year away, or a year and a few months away, in terms of the transfer window that we're talking about. So, Chelsea are looking at Livramento. They are looking at the clear progress that he's made since he joined Southampton, which, for anyone who's followed the academy or looked at the youth players for the development squads and whatnot, you'll know that it is not a surprise that Tino Livramento is thriving at Southampton right now. And I think Chelsea will look at £38 knowing damn well that it then gives them some flexibility with Rhys James being the potential right centre-back that we know he can be, he can be a defensive midfielder if need be. Having Livramento at the club gives Chelsea so many options and Rhys James so many options as to what we can do. If we then tie in the idea that this summer Chelsea are heavily linked to Jules Kunde, Chelsea want to bring in Jules Kunde as their top defensive priority signing... I think we could see, for next season at least, as backup for Reese James, Jules Kunde could end up being used as a right back, as a right wing back. It's not his preferred position, but I think it will be within Chelsea's best interest to wait until that opportunity arises in 2023 to bring back Tino Livramento if Southampton don't accept bids that come in from United potentially in this summer. If United really want him, if he continues having a great season, then I think Man United will put in a big bid for Tino this summer. But Chelsea next year will be looking at this thinking, well, if we bring in Jules Kunde, he can be that backup to Reese James on the right-hand side if we can also bring in another centre-back target and Rudiger stays and maybe Christensen and Asby too. Who knows at this point? But Rudiger looking most likely. Chelsea will see Livramento as part of a big long-term vision. And 38 million could end up being an absolute bargain if Tino continues to develop the way that he currently is at Southampton. Now, we're about seven and a half minutes in to this Chelsea News video today. And before the game yesterday, it was kind of poetic, of course, because Eden Hazard is formerly of Lille, formerly of Chelsea, arguably one of the most talented players to ever play for the club. And then news drops from Madrid that Chelsea are currently working on a loan deal for Eden Hazard that would see Hazard join Chelsea this summer. People were confused, thinking like, is it a loan deal to come in now? From what I understand, from whatever kind of truth there may be in this, it would be for this coming summer. Now, as much as we've already argued to death amongst ourselves and here on GBFC, you guys know that I love Eden Hazard. And if there was any way that I could see him in a Chelsea shirt again, I would bite your hand off for it. And I think alone from Real Madrid, he's 31, alone would be very, very good. And hear me out for this one, because we talked Jules Kunde. He's definitely not going to be as expensive as he was last summer. That's good potential business for Chelsea. Declan Rice, another big target for a potentially big fee from West Ham United. Chelsea will also probably this summer be looking to offload one or two attackers. And these players are quite often deployed in the wing position. So let's just hypothetically say that an unhappy Timo Werner does get a move back to the Bundesliga. I'm not saying I want this to happen, by the way. But if that move does come into fruition, Chelsea will be looking to bring players in in attacking positions. But with the heavy outlay that will come from a signing of Kunde, Declan Rice, potentially even another central defensive midfielder too. Let's just hypothetically call out a shower many, shall we? What Chelsea are going to want to do is in order to replace the attackers that leave, they're going to need to bring somebody in. So a loan move 
for an Eden Hazard, if we look at Pulisic's performance last night, we're not going to want a Pulisic playing like that going anywhere. We're not going to want a Hakim Ziyech going anywhere, playing the way he's been going too. Callum Hudson-Odoi can play on both the left and the right. Eden Hazard, he's one of those kind of players, he's a cultural player where when he feels like he is pivotal to the system, when he feels loved, then it can work. And I think a 31-year-old Eden Hazard is certainly not done in terms of a footballing career. And a loan move from Real Madrid means that Chelsea don't have to go out and splash so big on an attacker or a winger, which means then we can invest heavily in those positions that we desperately need to invest in if the likes of Kante, Jorginho do not extend their contracts. I think for that reason alone, regardless of sentiment for my desire to bring Eden Hazard back to Chelsea just because I think it would be incredible, I think that alone is a smart piece of business. We could see one or two, maybe more, attacking players leave the club this summer. So if we do that, then immediately our focus starts to shift to replace those guys. And I think a loan move for Eden Hazard, as risky as it can be with his injuries, the fact that he's not been the same player since he left Chelsea to go to Real Madrid, that is all true. I just think it would be perfect. A loan with potentially an obligation to buy, it's not going to be a massive one, or even just a season-long loan, and then he goes back to Real Madrid. He's not happy there. Chelsea certainly needs someone to come in up front. Like this tweet on the screen says now, who's going to say no to bring an Eden Hazard back with the inconsistencies of our attackers? I don't want to spend any more time talking about inconsistencies today because Christian Pulisic, Kai Havertz, lit the show up last night against Lille. So we're going to just leave that here. Let me know your thoughts on the rumours of the Hazard loan in the comments below. I hope you guys can also rationalise with my view of it would really save Chelsea some serious money to allow funds to go towards a Declan Rice and potentially another defensive midfielder or another midfielder or defender. So yeah, let me know all your thoughts on these in the comments down below. The new podcast episode is hopefully going to be going out maybe later today. If I don't manage to get it edited and uploaded today, then it will go out tomorrow. But thank you for all the love and support on all of the recent videos. We've been doing like two vids a day this week, trying to really get back into things here with the cup final coming up at the weekend. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you all later. Come on, you blues.